stay tuned for the Joan Quinn Profiles. Joan served the state of California as a member on the Arts Council and on the Film Commission. She was formerly on the Architectural Commission and fulfilled two terms on the Fine Arts Commission for the city of Beverly Hills. As an editor for Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, Condé Nast Publications, and the Hearst Corporation, Joan covered the world of fashion, the mysteries of food, the excitement of theater, and the international art scene. She continues to find people who are on the cutting edge of their professions. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, it's Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're here on location at the Hollywood Museum at Highland and Hollywood, and our guests today are designer Marcus Bender and director Randy Johnson. Director, writer, choreographer, producer, Randy Johnson is a native Angelino who graduated from USC Theater School. This award-winning multi-hyphenate has worked all over the world and with an unbelievable array of talent from Audrey Hepburn to Mike Tyson to Lorna Luft to Richard Dreyfuss and I can't believe this one, Pope Benedict <laughs> because that <laughs> sounds so fabulous. Um, he's written, directed, or produced plays about Conway Twitty, Elvis Presley, Patsy Cline, and Janis Joplin, just to mention a few. He's lauded and known not only for his artistry, but for your, your, um, your philanthropy and your volunteerism. So I commend you on that. Thank you. Did your career start at USC? Well, I mean, I, I started... Um, I was a very shy child, and I basically didn't speak to anyone until I was in the ninth grade. I Is that just, right? I just lived in my own little world. And, and where was that? What schools did you go to? I went to Culver City High School. Oh, you were in Culver City, right. Yes. Don't we love Culver City? It's great. <laughs> and it's really artistic now. Yeah, it is. And back then it was sort of artistic because we lived right next <clears throat> to the MGM lot. Oh, that's right. It was more of your genre than art and art galleries, which it is now, and wonderful restaurants. So, I mean, I would, my friends and I would hop the fence. <laughs> which, oh, so that's play. where your career started. <laughs> right. I started at MGM. Him, actually, um, <laughs> because we we play on the Andy Hardy set, the Tarzan Jungle, um, the Nanachka set. I mean, it was and it was all there. It was sort of run down, but I, we lived in the magic of MGM. So that really started your mind working. It I did guess. absolutely. I mean, I lived in my head. I read books and I watched TV and went to movies. And uh, but when I was nine in ninth grade. I found that I wanted to act. Yes, you were acting. I was an actor. You went to New York to act? No, I, um, well, I did. But well, it, I, um, my, my parents sent me to Lee Strasberg Theater School, and I <clears> studied <throat> with Lee himself. And um, then I had been turned down for the drama club three times in high school. <laughs> and finally I got in. <laughs> and um, I found that I had a voice as, as an actor. And I began to discover this creative journey began in high school. So, but you started, you were dancing. I danced, but I also found that I was, um, I could sing. And oh, you did too? I did. And um, I found out that I was funny. And <laughs> I actually, and that, that's, I got my degree in acting at, at USC. Oh, you were acting there too. Yes, I but did. where did you take dance lessons? Well, in New York, we were at Luigi's and JoJo's and Broadway Dance Center. Had you done anything in L.A.? Not really. I mean, I, could, I just did it in, naturally. Oh, it just came naturally. Well, then what if music must have been a big part of your background? Well, yes. My, um, my parents loved music. And the first album I remember hearing was a Dave Brubeck album. Mm. And my godmother's Keely Smith. Oh, okay. Then we get to the Louie and Keely part. Okay. And... Um, I never listened to like <coughs> like Disney albums. I listened to jazz, mm. and actually, one of the first albums I remember playing over and over was Janis Joplin album at five years old. Well, so what do you call Janis Joplin? Rhythm and blues? No, rock, rock and roll. roll. Rock and roll blues. Yeah, but not blues, right? No, I mean I grew up um, grew up listening to Nina Simone and Keely and Louie, and I remember seeing Sarah Vaughan <coughs> at a very young age. I remember seeing. Um, 
Mr. Sinatra and... But they were all singing here in L.A. And they we, used to sing at clubs, right? They here. sang at the, tru at the Troubadour and at, at Ciro's. And my parents right, would take me. Right, right, right. In Vegas, we'd go to Vegas because my father worked for Hughes Aircraft. Um, we'd go to Vegas for three oh, months. And I remember... Three months at a time you'd stay there? Mm -hmm. um, and they would take me to see the Rat Pack. And so uh, I grew up seeing these remarkable artists. Um, and they also would take me to theater. So I had a pretty broad exposure to the arts very young. I think that makes a big difference, totally. don't you? Because even if you don't have it, you've got something. You've got it they in also one way. They took me to art museums. So there you are. And, yeah. And um, my, and I felt the connection. I was fascinated by by certain artists like Picasso and, um, um, of course, Rembrandt and um, Rubens. When when you. When you mount a, sh a show, do those artists come into your mind? Do you think of color or form from what you learned in in the art world? Well, I think I think that every everything is <coughs> is it's we're a tapestry, as a and I think it all plays off. Um, but I mean, but when I was seventeen, I went to London and um, lived with friends of mine, oh. a, um, and all of a sudden I was in, from Culver City, California to the next day living in Knightsbridge and seeing, um, going to the Tate Gallery and seeing the, and, and these avant-garde shows. But, and also the people there were much more avant-garde than, than people here in L.A. Oh yeah, they didn't know how to spell it. Even New York, exactly. Even New York, because London was the place and you were lucky to be there so young. Yeah, I turned 18 in Paris. That was fabulous. But now, let's get back to all this work that you've done. You have this huge body of work, and I mentioned working with some of these celebrities. And let's go back to Lorna Luft, because that was at the Savoy Hotel. Um, yeah, my favorite theater, one of my favorite theaters. Great theater. Isn't it beautiful? And what was there? Dolly, Do Dolly Cart used to be there. They were there, and, and I found out when we were there that during World War II, it was a shelter. Oh, it was. Because the theater's underground. Um, but I did... Um, I directed uh, Lorna Luft's songs my mother taught me in London. So that was a coming back for you to London after several times, I'm sure. Well, no, I, I did, while I was at USC, I performed many seasons at the Edinburgh Festival. Oh, and you so did? Would, and every summer I would travel around Europe. But I mean, when you did Lorna Luft, it was like familiar territory oh to God, you. I would live in London in a second. <laughs> Even now? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you can put a show up there. So, and then, and, and then what'd you do with Audrey Hepburn? Um, she was putting together the Diary of Anne Frank Symphony, oh. and she narrated the diary to um, uh, a symphon original symphony, and they brought me in to um, work with her, and it was my first encounter, first star job. She was fantastic, wasn't she? She was such a kind, funny human being, and it was just, it was just the two of us for several days, and, and my dog. And your dog. <laughs> um, and it was, it was one of those experiences where I was driving to work the first day and I was about to throw up because I'm like, driving <laughs> to meet Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> and I remember um, this voice in my head saying, because I was going to pick up the, the phone. That was those days when you had those car phones. Uh -huh. phones oh, yeah, big phones. Yeah, <laughs> right? Big. And I was going to pick up the phone and just call in sick because I was just like, I can't do this, I can't do this. And a voice came in my head and said, you can't call in sick to your life. The rest of you. That's so good. And that has stuck with me ever since. And it's true. I wonder who said that to you. <laughs> Your probably mother? My, probably my grandmother. <laughs> Your grandmother goes way back. Uh, and then Richard Dreyfuss we talked about? Yes. You did a play with him? I did The Normal Heart, the West uh, Coast premiere of The Normal Heart at the Las Palmas Theater right down the street. Oh, yeah, right. And it was with Kathy Bates and Bruce Davison. And um, Did you direct it? No, I was my, it was my first producing job. Ah, how'd um, you like that compared to directing? I like them both. Oh. Um, I think that the, I, I mean, I like, I like doing everything on the other side of the, of the fence. Um, but I feel like I've really come home now as a writer, director, artist. And the last one, I mean, this isn't the last one. This is the first one, the Pope. <laughs> Pope Benedict. Yes. You really did? Did you see him? I, I met him. And, and my, my dog over there got blessed by him. 
Oh, that's so great. Um, I was um, asked to direct um, his New York appearances. And um, so we put together a four-hour concert before he appeared. Oh, that <coughs> oh, that's how. Oh, wow. And then I staged the Papal Mass and had Kelly Clarkson sing Ave Maria to him. Wow. And um, it was extraordinary. One of the things you just mentioned, Keely Smith was your godmother. She still is. She still is. You did that show, Louie and Keely. It's called The Wildest, Hip, Cool, and Swinging. And did you write it? I did. wrote and directed it. Um, I'd always wanted to honor Louie and Keely's music and do it in an interesting way. And so um, Tony Prima and Luann Prima and I wrote it, the daughters oh. of Louie and Keeley. And we did it at a PCPA Theater Fest up in Solvang. And it broke records, sold out for 10 weeks, 800 seats a night. And it was, I learned to tell the story of Louie and Keeley without any dialogue and let the music do all oh, the work. So that followed the string all the way it through. Did. And it was, I'm really proud of that piece. And it's, Samuel French took it on and it's produced all over the country. Oh, so they're still, and then how do they find someone to portray them? That must be the most difficult part. Well, I decided not to have anybody look or sound like uh, them. That's, because that's, you can't sing like Keely Smith. No. People can sing like Louie, but you can't sing like Keely Smith. Well, we've gone through all this stuff. You've done a lot of Western music stuff. You talked about Janis Joplin uh, and if we have time, we'll go back and talk about some of those other people. But um, how did you decide to write this play one night with Janis Joplin? Um, Jeff Jampol, who manages the estate of Janis, is an old colleague and friend of mine. And he called me one day and said, the Joplins are coming to town. Would you like to meet with them? Of course I would. And um, so it was going to be a 20-minute meeting. Turned into a two-and-a-half two half hour meeting. They wanted to do a new show about their sister. Because there was already one, right? There was. There is. Or there um, is. And is there any anything? Are they alike in no, any way? No, not at all. Um, so I met with them, and that's the next day they sent me her diaries and um, some of her artwork, and some of she designed her own costumes. And they talked a lot about her influences. It's primarily the um, the gospel and blues influences. <laughs> I was just going to say, do you call it do you call it a blues play or you call it a rock and roll play? Because she mentions rock and roll, but you have the blues influence in it. I simply I think that the story that the play is simply the story of Janice's life about her influences. <laughs> I think it's. It's not. It's not a bio piece. I think it's. Um, it's actually one night, right? It's, it's one like night. one day, and she, but it's so great because she talks to the audience. Yes, I put it in the form of an actual concert, but it's theater where the where the lyrics are the libretto. Mm -hmm. but she also speaks to the audience. Right. Um, it's. I think that it's. I've also incorporated art into the piece with the projections. Right. Um, the projections are great. Wh how. Um, Long a period was it before she passed on? How, how would you say this night that you wrote about was? That's for the audience to decide. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that's what you wonder where she is in the play. She does say, we're going to record this song next week. Yes. The song she never recorded. Oh, that's how so you that's know. that's sort of a clue. I see, because I know that she said that, and I know she was really happy on stage. Well, I think that the myth is that Janice was an unhappy woman, and I found the Janice that I've come to know to be a bright, articulate, funny, smart woman who had her demons. And raise your hand if you don't have demons. But you made it. You made her happy. You made her really exuberant. And the one other thing that was so great before we leave um, is the band. Where'd you find them? Most of them were, have been with me for two years since we opened in Portland. Oh, ta let's talk about where you opened in Portland. You were award-winning in Cleveland. Yes, and in D.C. And in D.C., right. We the have, arena stage. Yes, we have 17 nominations and wins already. It's unbelievable. And so what do you think is going to happen with One Night with Janis Joplin? Well, right now it's going to be touring the country for the rest of the year. And um, we'll see what the universe... <laughs> Brings, brings us. Well, the universe brought us you, Randy Johnson. Thank I'm you. so glad to have met you. You too. And it's been so long. I think we know each other from past. Past lives. Past, past.
Don't go away, we'll be right back with Marcus Bender. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're in the historic Max Factor building on Highland Avenue, which houses the Hollywood Museum. And our guest is designer Marcus Bender, who was born and raised in Wisconsin. He's a trainer, a gym owner, and the designer of Mark, of Mark, it's not of Mark, it's of Bend the Rules, right Marcus? The, um, the product is Bend the Rules. So Marcus, let's start on this journey of getting to bend the rules and your designing. But as a teenager, you started uh, weight training. Why was that? Gosh, I did, I did. This goes back just a few years, Joan. Not just a few. Uh, Fifteen years old. Um, kind of not really having a direction in life and knowing I needed one. <laughs> How and, was school? Was school okay then? Oh gosh, that's another story. We could... We could make it just a segment on my, my Bend the Rules high school stories. Okay. Trust me. But anyway, uh, yeah, I started weight training at 15. Uh, stuck with it ever since. And, and how did you get into weight training? Which was a good thing for you to get into. Well, it was, uh, yeah, it was a very good thing. Uh, back then, uh, before Arnold was, people <laughs> knew him. Uh -huh. I followed his career, and he, he inspired me. Uh, I don't know if that's kind of a touchy subject right now, Arnold, but... Uh, no, hey. but he was a weight trainer, and <laughs> he started he, young. Yeah, I had a lot, of, a lot of admiration for him back then <clears> and um, so forth, but... So, so what drove you into weight training? Were you having problems at school? Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And what were they? Do you really want to know that? Let's hear oh, it, because gosh. you're successful now well, on this end, and let's see how it started. Well, <laughs> let's see. Um, freshman year in high school, uh, I got kicked out for half a year. Oh. Just a half a year, get, got into a fight, you know. And then, is that when the weight training started? Well, it, it, yeah, basically, um, you know, in that half a year of being kicked out, uh, uh, People always say, why'd they kick you off for half a year getting into a fight? Well, when it's with the principal, they'll, that'll do it. That was the fight, okay. Yeah, that'll do it. Were you into health when you started doing the training? Did you get into health? Did you get into food? Uh, you know what? Um, it was all self-guided, uh, you know, reading uh, magazines, the <coughs> Arnold book. Was it? Yeah, uh, but... I come from, you know, I was, my brothers were older, they were taking me out on the partying scene, so drinking, smoking, uh, 15, you know, 14, yeah, 13 right. starting, so I knew I needed a better direction. And so, did you really direct yourself? I mean, that's pretty cool for a teenager to do. You know what, I, I did, <laughs> and... Um, my parents, the reason I got into trouble, my parents at that time were going through a divorce. And, you know, it was... It was you were the young one in the house. I, I was the youngest, yes. And at that age, you know, starting at 12, you know, you get a little... There's no real guidance. Um, so I followed my brothers into the party scene. I got it. Then, but once you started finding yourself, you found yourself enough... To open a gym. You opened your own gym, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, I started weight training, got my life focused, uh, ended up quitting high school. <clears throat> oh, you did? So oh, you didn't yes. go to college? I, well, that's the interesting Oh, okay. Part. Go on. I knew, I, I mean, I kicked out for a half a year. My sophomore year, I was getting three-day suspensions left and right. I didn't have enough credits. I'd probably still be in high school. No, just kidding. <laughs> but, um, but somewhere in here, I knew I had to uh, get an education. So I went up to local college. They had a program. You could study, oh, you get did. your GED. Oh, you did. Good yes. for you. Yes. And, Good for you. Um, so, but you had to be 17 to take it. So I'd studied, I studied for like a year. Good for And then I took it, passed everything. Then I went to uh, college. 
some you of did. that. Got a degree in marketing. And Where was that? Back in Wisconsin. And so, so by getting this degree, which is probably marketing business, yes, it was helped a you degree. open open your gym. Well, from the moment I got my graduated, uh, <laughs> I opened up a gym in a, a neighboring town I was uh, uh, living in, uh -huh. and had that for uh, five, just over five years. Did you ever think of franchising it and opening more gyms in that area? You know what? I at that time I didn't give that any thought. Oh, you didn't. Uh, I had it for like five years and decided to. It was a smaller town. Decided to move to Minneapolis. Oh, good. Yeah. Beautiful town. It it's a beautiful town. Uh, can't deal with winters. No, but, that's what uh, I'm <laughs> that's why I'm in California. That's why you're here, but. Um, you, you took those business classes, you took the marketing classes, and you came to California and you started training people. I did, uh, because I had been training clients since, uh, you know, I was very young, 19 years old. and uh, All one-on-one all -on -one yeah. kind of training? Yeah. And in the, in the time I had my gym, <laughs> and this is where my design part, um, the creative side of me uh, came to be, I designed a uh, weight training belt. It's a oh. very, very unique product, got a patent on it, uh, designed a wrist support glove, another patent. Oh, you were? You were just designing as you were training? Yeah, while I had my gym. And why were you doing that? Because there was a need for it, I guess. There, there was a definite need for a belt that was very comfort, comfortable. Comfortable. Yeah, so it had stainless steel springs in it. It was quite a unique product and uh, like I say, it uh, got a U.S. patent on it. And uh, that's, anyway, that's where my, the design part of me came in to be. So, were you talking to clients as you were designing and deciding what they needed or could you just... Oh yeah, that's, your... I had the workshop right there. I could test everything right there. Okay, and, and from training your clients and from this belt and from the glove, you went into track suits and you went into well, underwear and you went into yeah. a whole line of, of bend the rules stuff. It, yes. And well, you and, developed. And that, that was fa that's fast forwarding things to <laughs> being out here in LA. This goes back several years when I launched bend the rules. When did you, you launch the several years? Yeah. And then how did you develop this? Say these are boxer briefs. How'd you develop this? Well, the reason, the whole reason I, I came up with my initial product, uh, boxer it's so briefs. so soft and great. Thank you. Is I would listen to clients, you know, I would, when I trained my clients, I'd do power walks with them and, you know, just <coughs> complaining of ill-fitting, uh. poor performing underwear and, hey, I could relate to that. It was just something I wanted to create researched fabrics, and discovered Tencel was the way to go. Oh, that's it. Tencel is a certain brand? Well, Tencel is a brand. It's like a viscose. It comes from wood pulp. Uh, Model comes from wood pulp, too. But the big difference between like a Model and a Tencel is the tree in which it comes from. Uh, eucalyptus trees is where Tencel comes from. Uh, Model comes from like birch trees, different types I of trees. See. But the properties of uh, eucalyptus is, uh, first of all, it's naturally antibacterial. Oh. So for underwear, it's Very fabulous. interesting, yeah. Yeah, and it's more breathable, more durable than cotton. And that's why I chose that fabric. But uh, being in, living and working in Beverly Hills, I got accustomed to nice stuff. So I set out, I mean, these had to be the best pair. So and how did you creates. develop them? I mean, you weren't a designer. Who did you find to make this? To, to make this? Well, I knew how I wanted it to fit. I knew I, how I wanted it to look. So you had a different so I, size band, I'm sure. Yeah, every, a, everything was and my a, own a concepts. Different length here, yeah. but it stretches. I, I, picked a, I picked a length where it wasn't too long, wasn't too short, and <laughs> it had to be comfortable. And I love your... This feels like suede. Well, it, it's synthetic suede. Called, it's called ultra suede. Very B high-end. BTR. Bend the rules. BTR. See, a lot of people, they, 
they see the T in there and they just think it's like a plus a sign. A plus sign, yeah. But it's, we took the letter T and the and just turned it into a cross and that's how the logo began. Oh, so here's your logo and here's your packaging. My friend Pam Price yeah, has Pam talked to you and she said the packaging and the marketing is absolutely brilliant. And look ah, at the inside. You oh, have what do you have written on the inside? Well, that is actually I designed the box. I wanted it to look like <laughs> scripture, but it's there's no religious connotation except for the fact that it's the bend the rules scripture. And what I'm saying is, uh, everybody at some point, even religion, needs to bend the rules, whether it's uh, allowing priests to marry or gay marriage. Everybody, you kind of got to bend the rules here, and. So the, uh, the passage in there is from Genesis. It tells why God is going to put clothes on us. Oh, so it's, which of, is perfect. For yeah, <laughs> that's it. So, Did you read? And then it's like a box that you can use again yeah, it's, and store. Exactly. It's a reusable box. Uh, you know, people send me pictures of what they use it for, everything from storing their letters to condoms alongside their nightstand, you know. <laughs> and I then know. this is the logo. You're, it is. And is Bender your real name? <laughs> <laughs> or are you let's just go back bending? to my grandfather. Yes. Are we bending had, the his rules? His name was Bender. It, was it? Well, you know, people say, how'd you come up with Bend the Rules? I like that. Well, I didn't know if it was because my my name being Bender or if it was the way I've lived my life. And boy, did I, yeah, I bent the rules there. So you bent the rules. So you're Bender, Bend the Rules. Yeah, it's So uh, what, uh, uh, besides the briefs, uh, oh, and here's the other logo the cross yeah, and we have it's, it's our graphics our graphics and i do a lot with dragons i'm i'm big into dragons i think dragons are cool uh i happen to be the year of the dragon i don't maybe that oh. has something to oh, do yeah, with it but yeah. uh but you'll notice um joan he has a every little... <laughs> graphic i have i have one red swarovski crystal i see it it's not two it's not three it's <clears> just <throat> one it gives it its heartbeat even on the black ones Yes, every. The, I'm going to open this black you, you one too, just them. to show. Be like Christmas. I'm going to open this so, and it's and it's so great because it has this on the inside, the bend the rules rules, and it has <laughs> <laughs> the bend rules rules. Oh, and this is gorgeous. Thank you. This is beautiful. More dragons. Dragon on my sleeve. A dragon on your. It's fantastic. So, to, what are the tracksuits like, really quickly? Tracksuits are coming out, uh, uh, we just actually came out with them. Yes. And they're also... Out of the same fabric? It's, it's, it has Tencel in it. Everything I do, I, I use a Tencel. I just, I think it's uh, <coughs> uh, fabulous. I, with the tracksuits, I've blended uh, Tencel with other uh, fibers. But uh, it's, it's high end. It, it's, mm. it's very nice. It'll last, like... Everything I do lasts a long time. Pan separate pants, separate top, a top yeah, like you, you're wearing? You, you buy them separately, um, you know, the, the jacket and the pant. And I, I kind of pick colors and designs so everything, you can grab whatever and it's going to match up. Will the tops be like what you're wearing? Uh, yeah, these we just uh, came out with as well. Uh, Tencel. Um, it, once you wear them, it's hard to wear anything That's else. That's what really I hear. Is. I'm so glad you brought this to show us. Thank you so much, Marcus. You're welcome. And good yeah. luck, and we'll keep training. <laughs> yes, we will. Okay. And thank you. Keep writing to 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, and email me at J-A-Q-U-I-N-N-1. See you next time.